and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Report Show. I'm your host, Robert. Impact Wrestling No Surrender Review uh, last night on Fight TV and on Impact Plus. Overall, not a bad show. Um, at the very end, we had a little vignette for Up and Coming for Impact. Um, okay. We had from New Japan Pro Wrestling, Finn Juice which is Juice Robinson and David Finley. Um, how they fit in with Impact and AEW, I never, I'll never know, but I love the idea of New Japan Stars and Impact. New Japan Stars and AEW. Impact Stars and Impact. Or Impact Stars and AEW, New Japan. We can even go this just a full step further. Ring of Honor has a working relationship with New Japan. Ring of Honor has a working relationship with AAA out of, out of Mexico. New Japan has a working relationship with CMLL. They also have a working relationship with Rev Pro. What this does, this can bring talent into this, all this. So we have Impact Wrestling, we have AEW, we have New Japan. If you add a Ring of Honor, Rev Pro, CMLL, and AAA, it's seven different companies with some of the biggest stars in the industry. They have Access TV rights, they have TNT, they have BR Live, they have New Japan Pro Wrestling has their own streaming service. Rep Pro has their own streaming service. You have YouTube channels across the board. Ring of Honor has their own streaming service. You can get eyes on the product. You can get shows out there. Fight TV does impact shows, Ring of Honor shows, and some New Japan. So, I mean, this could be the start of something huge in professional wrestling. Um, so I can't wait. And here we are, early 2021, as the ground floor gets laid. Can you imagine if this continues and builds in five years what we could have? It could be the world of professional wrestling versus WWE. Really not versus, but hey, you know what? For us fans, dream matchups could happen. Stuff we never thought we would ever see. All right, let's run down this card. First match, we had a six-person intergender tag match. We had Tennille Dashwood teaming up with XXL, which is AC Romero and Larry D, versus the team of Duck K, which is Rosemary, Crazy Steve, and they have recently added Black Taurus. The team of Decay getting that victory. It wasn't special. It was a match. It was good. It was an impact-level match. Um, two and a quarter stars what I end up giving it. Um, next up, we had a team of Eddie Edwards and Matt Cordova, Cordova versus Brian Myers and Hernandez. This really only got kind of put together because of Matt Cordova and Brian Myers used to tag together in WWE. And so now they're feuding, and they kind of added guys with it to make a tag match out of it. Um, I mean, it was okay. It was a good match. For these are four guys, it was a pretty good match. I still want to see more out of Eddie Edwards. Um, I, Brian Myers and Hernandez gained the victory. I ended up giving it two and three quarters. Um, now I did also pick that, predict my preview. I did have Brian, My Brian Myers and Hernandez winning that. Next up we had Diener versus Jake Something. Jake Something came into Impact as Cousin Jake. He was the cousin of Cody Diener. The Diener compound and all this. Well, when the violence of design, violence by design came in, which is Eric Young, Joe Domain, they kind of Diener added. We got added to that. They kind of were like, Jake was like, "No, we're family. You know, you need to be with me, not them." And he kind of changed his like a cult person, kind of like a cult, kind of like a cult thing. Jake went back to his given wrestling name and get Jake something. Um, it's like it was kind of built up, it kind of a let down in the same mat, same idea. I mean, match wasn't horrible. I do think highly of Jake something on the indie circuit, so I know he's talented. Um, he did get kind of a roll up victory here at the end, and then he gets attacked by Joe Doring. Um, so I think this is going to continue, but Jake something getting the victory here. I ended up giving it two and three quarters. The next match, I would say, would probably match of the night. Um, but I love the concept of it. It was an eight-person triple threat revolver match. 
didn't under, I guess I kind of fast forward through some of Impact, so I missed the rules of this until the show started. So it was eight guys, basically starts as a triple threat match. And then as soon as somebody's eliminated, somebody else comes in. So the eight participants were Davari, um, Suicide, Willie Mack, Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, Josh Alexander, and Blake Christian. Um, I picked uh, Trey Miguel to win this in my preview. The first three out were Trey Miguel, Blake Christian, and Suicide. Uh, Trey Miguel ended up submits, makes Suicide submit, and then Chris Bay comes out. Chris Bay actually pins Blake Christian, and then Devari come out, which I was kind of sad to see. I think Blake Christian is super talented. I was kind of hoping they would sneak in and win with him. But hey, he's on TV, he's on pay-per-views, I'm, I'm all in with that. Um, Miguel ends up pinning Tavari, Josh Alexander comes out, Alexander submits Chris Bay, which brings Willie Mack out. Trey Miguel pins Willie Mack, which brought the last one out, Ace Austin. So the final three was Trey Miguel, Josh Alexander, and Ace Austin. At this time I was like, oh great, yeah, no, I'm, I'm dead right on this one. Trey Miguel's going to win because he was first in. He's like, nope. They end up having Josh Alexander get the victory on this. So, Josh Alexander is your new number one contender for the X Division Championship. I'm actually good with that. I think he's a talented guy. He was teaming with Ethan Page, of the North, um, multiple time tag team champions, the longest reigning tag team champions in the history of Impact. Um, this match was just kind of a kind of a there kind of match. It was kind of a gauntlet type. It was just there. I mean, it wasn't overly, you know. Spotty, it was just kind of, hey, 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 we'll go through our moves. Um, I give it three and a quarter. But can't wait to see Josh Alexander versus either um, the Impact Champion, the, uh, 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 either Rahit Raju, Raju or TJP. Um, next up, we had the Knockout Tag Titles on the line in the Texas Tornado Rules match. We had Champions Fire and Flava. Versus Havoc and Nevea. They built Havoc and Nevea up like they're doing it. I mean, Havoc obviously is a bigger person, so they built them up like monsters. And you, you know, you gotta slay the beast in order to win here. So they had Tasha Steels and um, Kira Hogan literally, tr you know, chopping down like you, you know, taking their legs out from under Havoc, kind of chopping down the big person and. Uh, like you're chopping down a tree and going out there and doing their moves and stuff and getting their kind of down. They end up getting the victory there. Um, I mean, it was an okay match. And it was nothing spectacular. It was just kind of a, okay, it was short, sweet to the point. Here we go. Fire and flavor get the victory. Um, they end up pinning Havoc. One, two, three, middle of the ring, which is kind of weird. And then you had Havoc and Nevea later kind of. I will not say fighting, but more of a, you know, what happened, how did we lose kind of deal. We'll see where this goes forward, um, but one thing, I could see a lot, I could see Havoc and Demand breaking off in the single versus the tag team here. Uh, I, I don't know where you go with this on some of these tag teams here, but you know, hey, we'll figure it out. We have still knockout tag team champions, Fire and Flema. I give it a three-star match. Next up, we have the X Division title on the line. We have champion Rory, TJP versus Rahit Raju with uh, Shira in his corner, in Raju's corner. Again, this match was just kind of short, sweet. There it was. Boom. Here we go. Do a few moves. Be done. TJP getting the victory. Um, so we have TJP re retaining his X Division championship. Now we have TJP versus Josh Alexander for the X Division title coming up. Um, next up, we had a six-woman tag match. We had Knockouts Champion, Deanna Peraza, the Virtuosa, teaming up with Kimberly and Susan, her little running mates, versus Jordan Grace, ODB, and Jazz. Jordan Grace is the most talented person in this ring. ODB does not need to be there, and Jazz need, needs to retire. So, the way... <laughs> I mean, what was weird is Kimberly and Jordan Grace were kind of matchy almost. I'm like, ah, that's kind of weird. You got something going on there? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing really special. I mean, you had ODB running around doing her stuff, grabbing herself, etc. Some of the strikes for Jazz was like, 
Is that supposed to hurt? Um, so yeah, I mean, this match was very underwhelming to me. Uh, Jordan Grace, ODB, and Jazz getting victory, little face victory there. Um, I give it two and a half. Um, next up, we had the Impact Tag Titles on the line in a triple threat match. We had champions The Good Brothers versus Private Party versus Chris Saban and James Storm. I like the fact that we put two Impact t TNA Originals, Chris Saban and James Storm, together. Um, Alex Shelley is normally Saban's partner and Storm just returning. Um, the fact that Private Party is there from AEW kind of built them up a little bit. I like it. I said in the preview, I didn't see them taking the titles off of the Good Brothers at all. There's no reason to. It doesn't help the storylines. It doesn't really help anything. Um, obviously, when you were tying in two companies with the tag titles, the Good Brothers team, Impact Champions, AEW's Champions, the Young Bucks, and then the mega faction they're working on, you kind of knew no, it was, they weren't going to lose. Um, Private Party, up-and-coming team. Like Matt Hardy keeps saying, the second best tag team in history. We all know the Hardys are number one. I see Private Party in the way they are in the ring right now, the same way the Young Bucks was five years ago. Maybe seven years ago. Maybe ten years ago with the Bucks. But it's like they're hungry, they're talented, they just need to kind of develop more. A couple spots in this match where you had the... Private party running into each other, it's like, huh, that's kind of weird. It's almost like one of them doesn't want to be with Matt Hardy and the other one does. It's like they got to convince them to be there. I don't like that. I don't like having, you know, Matt Hardy as this, you know, fucker kind of guy or whatever you're supposed to be, agent, you know. I get 50% of what they're I get 30%. I'm like, really? Let's let these guys go out and wrestle. Um, but just like I said in the preview, the Good Brothers retained the titles here. Um, I give it three and a quarter. Um, it, was, it was pretty good. It was actually overall a decent match. Um, main event, we had the Impact World Heavyweight Championship on the line. We had champion Red Swan versus happy 50, 50th birthday to Tommy Dreamer. I did not preview and I, I get a message, I get a comment. Tommy Dreamer's still wrestling, huh? <laughs> this is from an ECW fan, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021, we have a made of it with Tommy Dreamer in it. Trust me, if you go back 20 years, if you go back to 2000, if you, if somebody would have said, okay, in 2021, 20 years from now, Tommy Dreamer's going to main event a freaking wrestling show for a world title. People would have had me committed. But we had it on his 50th birthday. Yeah, Tommy Dreamer needs to go away. Um, I'm busting open radio. He is good to go. Him and Dave LaGreca, I'm all in with some Tommy Dreamer there. Mark Henry, I'm Bully Ray, I'm all in. Tommy Dreamer, the main event versus Fritz Swan. Um, so Fritz Swan, as predicted, got the, got the win. I ended up giving it two and three quarters. It was a decent match. Fritz uh, Swan did his best. <laughs> Let's just go there. Rich did his best. Tommy Dreamer tried. Uh, we'll get Tommy Dreamer A for effort there. Uh, but yeah, two or three quarters are. Was it trash? Was it great? Um, it was watchable. Um, this was more of a these monthly pay per views that they're doing on Impact Plus called No, you know, the No Surrender and Turning Points and all that and Genesis and stuff. They're almost too much for Impact. You, you need time to build things up. These are just almost like an advanced Impact Wrestling show. It's like enhanced. It's like an enhanced show. Is all it is. It just I love it. Really built some build up to quant, qual, quantity or quality. Excuse me, quality quality matches and give it some time. Like a takeover, like an NXT takeover. But hey, you know what? Um, as Impact keeps throwing them out there, I'll keep reviewing, and reviewing, and previewing. Um, stay tuned, Robert Sports Show for the review of NXT Takeover Vengeance Day sometime tonight, tomorrow. Also have a Daytona Speed Weeks review up uh, as we get ready for in NASCAR the road course next weekend. In professional wrestling, we get ready for the road to Elimination Chamber, which is next Sunday. And then uh, as we are on the road to WrestleMania, lots of previews, lots of reviews, right the best of right here at Robert Sports Show. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. Don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your 
YouTube leader in sports channel content.